Hello everyone, happy holidays. It's your girl DJ Rachel and I'm back with another video and today I want to talk about corporate holiday parties. I had three holiday parties last week. I had one on Thursday and then two on Friday. The first party was from noon until 4 p.m. and then the second one was from 6.30 until 10.30. It was a jam-packed day but a really good time at both events. Now I normally don't do two events back to back like that, but as you know, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And that was actually the inspiration for this video because both of these parties had a completely different vibe and skill set needed to get the job done. And I wanted to talk about some of those differences and some tips to do successful holiday parties. First, I wanna talk about what was similar between the two events, as well as some general best practices for successful corporate holiday parties. So I think of these events a lot like I do my weddings. I wanna keep things fun, upbeat, familiar, clean, open format, bouncing around from genre to genre, decade to decade. Obviously it has to make sense for who's in front of you, but overall everybody should be able to enjoy at least something being played. Typically at corporate events, there is a lot of diversity. So my first tip is you really should have a basic understanding of who the company is, kind of who's working there. It's okay to ask who's ever booking you this and just get an overall understanding of who you're gonna be performing for. Now, if you can't get this information, then obviously always play it on the safe side and keep things, again, kind of oriented in a pop-based format, super clean, family-friendly, good energy, and just play it safe. Couple things to keep in mind with this. Obviously, management's around, HR's around, you know, you're obviously representing that business, so they don't want any, you know, HR nightmares. I actually do corporate events in a way that's even more conservative than my weddings, because ultimately my wedding couple can tell me kind of what they like to hear, you know, what decades and genres and artists might be okay, and I'm gonna play it because at the end of the day, that's what they want. But at a corporate event, I really don't think we have that type of flexibility typically. So I really approach these as extremely conservative events, but I'm also very conscientious about, did I say that weird? Conscientious, there we go, we'll go with it. Conscientious about the context of the music. So again, it's not just about bad words, but it also is about, you know, kind of what is being said and any type of, you know, awkward music that just might be a little weird to play at a corporate event. So here's an example. I would normally play maybe Marvin Gaye's sexual healing at a wedding during dinner time. I am not gonna be playing Marvin Gaye's sexual healing at a holiday corporate party. So even though the words aren't bad, it's a great song, it has an awesome vibe. Um, it's just not something I think is appropriate or comfortable in that type of environment. Another example of this that comes to mind, even though it's, you know, fun, familiar, throwback, is uh, next too close. You know, baby, when we're grinding, I get so excited. I mean, could you imagine being an HR person in the room and the DJ throws on that? So it's not just about, you know, not playing prolific artists. Also, content here matters. Always play it on the safe side. That is the best advice I can give you. This is not the time to be edgy, push the envelope, um, you know, drop, you know, newer tracks and experiment. Um, I play these super, super conservative. That brings me to another point, is finding out if this is just strictly an employees only corporate party or if they are allowed to bring spouses or significant others because that changes the dynamic completely. Now, both of my holiday parties were strictly employees only. Uh, I knew that upfront, so I knew going in, again, I wanted to keep things very high energy, fun, familiar, focus it more on the socialization aspect and I didn't want to play any you know, slow dances or create any awkward moments for the people at the party. So it's also important to know that because that's gonna change the vibe, the dance floor if there is one, and just how the people attending this party are intermingling with everybody else. Now, these next few tips might seem a bit obvious, but I do want to expand upon them just a little bit. 
So obviously I think it goes without saying you should have good communication with whoever is hiring you about what the expectations are of the party. Do they want someone who's really interactive? Are they looking for icebreakers? Do you have to be prepared with maybe some games? Do they just want to keep it really low key? Another thing, expectations regarding holiday music. Maybe they want a lot. Maybe they want none. Maybe they say they don't care and they leave it up to you. So how do you kind of navigate that? So obviously ask, and if they'd say, listen, we really want to stay away from anything, you know, super Christmas oriented. We want to keep it more of just a wintry, festive, you know, place where our employees can just kind of hang out and drink and talk. And we don't really want to recognize the holiday. Totally fine. If they're okay with it and you are going to play holiday music, Here's a couple tips with that. So the first thing that I think of is, again, what type of company am I DJing for? Am I doing something for a retail-based company like maybe Walmart, Home Depot, Target, another type of uh, retailer, or is this a private business or something completely out of the retail space? I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious about playing holiday music at maybe a retail holiday party unless of course I'm told hey play as much holiday music as you want because these people are probably getting assaulted by it all day working in a retail environment so obviously I don't want to continue to attack them um, with Santa baby and rocking around the Christmas tree however if it is a private business that isn't uh, oriented in you know, a retail environment with music blasting over, you know, their, uh, their speakers, you might be able to go a little bit more heavier with Christmas music. The other part with this is when selecting certain holiday tracks, I really try to stay away from anything with heavy religious undertones, you know, things that specifically are talking about Jesus Christ, the birth of Christ. There are a ton of great, uh, Christmas songs that don't have that religious component to it, such as It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, Walking in a Winter Wonderland, Frosty the Snowman, um, even Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, yeah, it says Christmas, but it's got a really great vibe and energy to it, and there's nothing really religious in that song, so seek out those types of tracks that, again, are fun, familiar, and palatable for everybody. Now, as I said before, my first party was earlier in the day. It was around lunchtime to early afternoon. Now, when you typically think of daytime events, you don't think of them being super hype with epic dance floors, right? Especially at a corporate event, you think of it more of just kind of like a social luncheon, but I'm here to tell you that that stereotype is not a thing because during my first holiday party, these people came to party and it was pretty much straight dancing for about 45, 50 minutes, and it was a blast. Now, this particular party had a really great mix of people. There were people that loved Latin music. There were people that were into funk. Um, I was able to dabble in top 40 and disco and just a bunch of great, I'll call it, you know, kind of wedding classics, sing-alongs, things like that. I even got to play a, um, Aura, even though it was a holiday Christmas party, one of the owners is Jewish and asked that, you know, we could kind of celebrate and do that. And it was probably the best moment of the entire party. Now this brings me to my evening holiday party, the one from 6.30 to 10.30. Now typically you think of evening events having, you know, great lighting. There's always a different energy during the evening. I thought that maybe I would have the same type of vibe and energy at this second holiday party. I couldn't have been more mistaken. Uh, this was 110% just kind of a dinner and drinks and social event, which brings me to the final part of this video. Another big tip I have with corporate parties is you can't force it. Either they're going to dance or they are not going to dance. And either way, it is completely okay. I knew my first group, they wanted a party and I gave them what they wanted. I wasn't 100% sure with the second holiday party. I tried a little bit, saw what type of response, wasn't exactly as uh, hype as I thought it was going to be, kind of dialed it back a little bit, tried one more time, didn't get the response I wanted, kind of gave it one, you know, final effort to 
bring up the dance floor and I finally said, all right, the people have spoken. They want lively, fun music and I could elevate the volume and that wasn't a problem, but they wanted to just kind of hang out, mingle, foot tap at the bar and that was completely fine by me. I tried a little bit of everything to see if maybe I just wasn't dialed in to what was going to, you know, bring them to the dance floor. And I don't care if it was Earth, Wind and Fire. I don't care if it was um, About Damn Time by Lizzo. I tried Motown. The only thing I didn't try was line dances because this definitely didn't seem like that type of crowd. But I really dug deep into trying to motivate these people to come out on my dance floor and they just didn't want to. All right, I'm making this video for all DJs out there. As we know, on social media, we usually post, you know, packed dance floors and us killing it. This is proof that even playing September might not be enough even at a company party. Sometimes all they want to do is just drink and talk and you can't force it. So I've been dabbling in and out of Motown, 80s, classic disco, about damn time by Lizzo. I play Jackson 5. Nothing is working tonight. And that's okay. So this is me reaching out to the DJs out there. You know what? As long as you got foot taps and people seem like they're having a good time, that's all that matters. Not every dance floor is a rager. And here's proof in the pudding. So with that, I'm going to get back to just doing my thing. And that's it. So have a good night, DJs. And that does not mean the event wasn't successful. So even though party one had an epic dance floor, the people had a really awesome time. And my second event, people just kind of wanted to sit at their tables and hang out and vibe and bounce and sing along with the songs. They still had a great time. And how do I know? Because I still got a tip at the end of the night. And then when I followed up with the client just to say, you know, thank you again for having me. It was an absolute pleasure to see everybody. You know, hope to see you next year. You can see exactly what they wrote back to me right here. As we kind of close this out, uh, I hope you guys were able to kind of just pick up on my perspective of these things and maybe some of these tips or suggestions are going to help you be a little bit more comfortable with your upcoming holiday events. So with that, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any other specific questions about holiday parties, you know, be sure to put them in the comments. I will get back to you. And with that, I hope everyone has a beautiful and wonderful holiday season and happy new year, everybody. We'll see you next year because this is probably gonna be my last video of 2022.